We've seen other countries, modern countries, you know, they have electricity and running water and all, and all these other conveniences. We've seen them fall into and become brutal dictatorships. I think it could very well come to that based on the things that are happening in the news and we're seeing, you know, the collapse of our economy, so many different things happening. They have paved roads, they have running water, they have electricity, they have cable TV. So what is it that keeps it from happening in the United States? Being Americans, we have a lot of freedoms. And what if those freedoms are taken away? Just look at history, look at the history of the United States and the history of the world and acknowledge that things like this can happen, things like this have happened, things like this are happening right now. Protesters in Anaheim, California clashed with police for a fourth day following two fatal shootings by police of suspected gang members, one on Saturday, one Sunday. I'm not trying to justify what happened. I'm just trying to find justice. One of the dead men, 25-year-old Manuel Diaz, was apparently unarmed. If we don't use our voices and we don't let these people hear our voice, nothing will be changed. He was down to the shot of the second time. The people were supposed to be protecting us. The cops are the ones doing this. They're socking him in the face. They're hitting him in the face. <laughs> they're still hitting him. They're hitting him in the face. Look, they're socking him in the face. He's not resisting. He's really not. He's saying he's scared. And they're still socking him in the face. They're socking him in the face. Tuesday night, protests turned violent after a crowd of up to a thousand people were denied entry to a packed city council meeting. So there was, was there a lot of kids during that time? Yeah. And did you see like babies around, yeah. around too? Yeah. So why would like the... two babies. Two babies? Yeah. Did any other um, children get hit with oh, rubber bullets? A five-year-old oh, girl, five girl got hit in the eye. And a boy in the feet. They didn't even tell them to, 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 to stop bullying them. what they to, they did. They just shot them right ahead and killed them. Right and right and in and the head. His head. His back. His head. His back. His head. His back. His head. His back. No. Right here. He's back. Are you all right? You have an unarmed civilian running away that's an alleged gang member that they say is alleged, and they shoot and kill this guy. He's dead. The police officers are shooting women and children and letting their dogs out on him. Where's Obama now? What if your son was Manuel Diaz? What if he was murdered by Anaheim police?
just started running after people. Huh? The cops just started running after people. Yeah. Now we're seeing a complete totalitarian takeover of the United States of America. And we've been talking about this for years now. This is the police state. This is the police state. This is what a total breakdown of our society looks like. But we're seeing all of this intensify. This is all intensifying uh, around uh, the Second Amendment. Should we be able to own guns or not? Let's take guns away from the people. Uh, these are very big, very hardcore issues. being thrown to the ground. There he is. Close range shot. Uh, looked like to the chest. Um, didn't look like any more than 10 feet, maybe 5 feet at the most. Right there. Very, very close range. Very, very close range shot.
but it's scary to think how we're already halfway there. We're already at the light gray state, and it's all shades of gray. 2004, for instance, uh, free speech zones were unknown. Everywhere was a free speech zone. That's what this country was founded on. It's a peaceful you assembly. You are an American citizen, and you shall be arrested for having freedom of speech and using the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. The Constitution is a very dangerous concept. You don't dare try to invoke the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. This is no longer a third. As they encroach on our rights, as they say there are more and more threats out there and terrorism is real, we're taking off our shoes first and then we're getting patted down and then we're getting body scanned and radiated and patted down again and now I'm getting swabbed with my hands to check for explosives. Do you like to fly? Yeah. Do you think we should be treated like cattle? No, yeah. Yeah, I do. You do? Absolutely, yeah. I do. Do you think there's integrity in politics or integrity in banking? Wait, wait, no, go back to that. Go back? You don't think that airport security is a good thing? You know what? They're not violating anybody's rights. They you are. You don't have to fly if you don't want to. Every American, every person on United States soil or international soil can be deemed as a terrorist. If they have really any reason to want to detain you, they don't need to acknowledge your Fourth Amendment rights. It's what supported things like the Patriot Act and now the NDAA and the ever encroaching police state. By order of the city of Pittsburgh chief police, I hereby declare this to be an unlawful assembly. I order all those assembled to immediately disperse. You must leave the immediate vicinity. If you remain in this immediate vicinity, you will be in violation of the Pennsylvania Crimes Code. No matter what your purpose is, you must leave. If you do not disperse, you may be arrested and or subject to other police action. The disease is statism, and people are evolving past the paradigm of institutionalizing their desires to dominate others by violence and coercion into this thing called government. We're realizing that the morality that we expect ourselves to adhere to, the standards of, of behavior and conduct, like when you were taught in kindergarten, don't hit and don't steal, it wasn't unless you're a cop or an IRS agent. You know, and when you learned thou shalt not kill, it wasn't unless your dear leader gives you a gun and a badge and a one-way ticket to the other side of the world. Those were moral absolutes, but what we are doing now is institutionalizing them in government and creating this moral exception for people that have the socially granted monopoly on the initiation of force over a given geographical area by calling it government and pretending that it's good for us.